So with the put option, as the stock price falls, the value of the option increases. So we're keep in mind that the value of any option or a put option, a put must be equal to the value maximum of X, the exercise minus S. So as the stock price is falling, the value of the option is increasing. Um, and in that sense, the put option is kind of like an uh, insurance policy against stock price decreases. So um, here we note that if the stock price is 48.40, that exceeds the 42. Because the 48.40 is greater than the 42, then we wouldn't exercise the option. And the intrinsic value of the option, the value of the option at expiry or maturity then is zero. But as the stock price falls below the exercise, as uh, if X is 39.60, and sorry, if X is 42, and the stock price is 39, then because 42 is greater than 39.60, the value of the put option would be 240 and again down here if the stock price falls to 3240 the value of the put option taking the difference between 3240 dollars and 42 dollars the difference between the two would be 960 and we would report that as the intrinsic value or the value at expiry now basically we've set out a couple of uh, steps in the tree. One is you have to generate the tree from the information we have here. We generate the stock prices throughout the mesh or the lattice or the tree and it's growing by an equivalent by 10% or reducing by 10%. It's not quite like Cox, Ross, Rubenstein um, this tree because uh, the magnitude of increase and decrease when multiplied together would bring us back to one and then um, here we find that the the Cox Ross Rubenstein tree tree would recombine to 40 this particular tree not exactly like Cox Ross Rubenstein is recombining to a different figure so we start here at 40 then goes to 39 60 either way is this tree uh, the basic Elements of the tree are similar broadly to Cox Ross Rubenstein, and we're doing a two step tree. So, once we generate the terminal option values, we have to then go back to the earlier nodes and we've got to estimate the node here at B, the value, the time value of the option here at C, and then ultimately the value of the node at A. And that produces then the option value. In order to take go back to the tree we embark on backward induction or backwardation and we first of all have to calc from the information that we have contained here in the narrative we have to generate the risk neutral probability so if the stock price is going up by 10 or down by 10 u would be 1.1 and d would be 0 0.9 so we take this e r T delta T minus U sorry minus D over U minus D and when we work out the risk neutral probability of the up move we find that it's 6523 okay and then we take that and we substitute it back into our backward induction formula where that formula is E negative RT by P by FU value of the option stock price goes up plus 1 minus P, so this subtracted from 1, by FD. Okay, so we have, we take this value, this is FU, from the perspective of B, if we're looking at the B node, the FU in relation to B, FU is this 0, and FD is 240, so FU and FD. When we take the products, the sum, the products and then sum the products and then multiply uh, by the square brackets we get 81 cent and that value then would actually be located here and that then becomes the time value in the option or the value we get from backward induction again we're f 
for part A, A here, we're just considering the European option. And we don't have any, we don't add any more sophisticated uh, nuances in the tree. It's just basic backward induction. Again, uh, once we've worked out the value, the node at B, we have to con come back to C. And we have to work out the value here, the time value of the option here. We do precisely the same type of estimation. The only thing that changes is the relativity of Fu and Fd. So before this was Fu and this was Fd. From the perspective of C, 240 now is Fu. And 960 is Fd. Again, the formulas that we have here, we can uh, go back and take a look at this risk neutral type. These are the formulas that we're using. F is equal to P, F, U, 1 minus P, F, D, E negative R, T, and P here is the risk neutral probabilities. Okay, and so that's what's driving this here. Okay, so we estimated the value. If we take the value at C, this is F, U, this is F, D. We substitute 240 into F, U, 960 into F, D. Otherwise, we have P. 1 minus p e negative r by the time step which is the full time period six months but for one time step it's three months and 0 0.25 years is three months when we work this out taking the sums and the products so on we get 4759 and that's actually what we attribute then to c so the value the hold it the time value at c is 4759 last step in the estimation here is to work out the value at node a we uh, take a 10 which is here 4759 which is here and this becomes the new fu this becomes the new fd relative to node at a so if we take that a 10 put it in here and take 4759 and put it in beside the 1 minus p term when we run the estimation e negative rt discounting at the risk per rate taking the sum of the products we get 2118 and so that then is the value of the european option so at a working out the value of the european option in a two-step model we get 2118 second part here asks how do we estimate or what is the value of the american put option Okay, we could take a look at that. Only one small difference occurs when we're getting the American put option. Uh, bef again, the tree is exactly the same with the same type of notation A, B, C, D, E, F in terms of the node. The stock prices don't change at all. Same stock prices as before. Intrinsic values are the same. And likewise, we estimate in a very similar fashion all of these values that we estimated for the American for the European tree okay the only difference that occurs in terms of going from the European to the American tree is that when we get to the second last the middle step here in other words when we go beyond the last column and then in the column preceding the last column we must ask the question is it optimal to exercise the option early and if the stock price is 44 and the exercise is 42 then it would not be optimal to exercise the option early because 42 minus 44 if we use the formula that we had here before x minus x if x is 42 and s is equal to 44 then 42 minus 44 is minus 2 and it makes no sense to take a loss of 2 so you stick with the time value that we had originally estimated for the European option then we go down to this node here node C we perform exactly the same type of exercise we ask the question does it make sense to exercise the option early the value of the pot is the maximum of X minus S when we substitute 42 into the exercise and then subtract away s s is 36 we get a value of 6 
So if we exercise immediately, the value of the option would be 6. Or if we decide to postpone, the postponing the holding value of the option is 4759. Of the two, it's more desirable to go with 6. And so instead of using 4759 like what we had before, we substitute in 6. We substitute in the 6. So we get same estimation as before for node A, but instead of putting in 4759 that we did, like we did with the European option, we put in the value of 6. And when we put in the value of 6, we work out the value of the option then using this backward induction formula is 253.7, which is higher. That's not that unusual. Generally speaking, American puts are more valuable than American calls. In the case of, uh, and that's where there is no dividend, it can be the case of no dividend. In the case of American calls, uh, generally speaking, if there's no dividend yield, American call and European call of the same value. If there is a dividend yield, then the American call can exceed the value of the European call. Uh, for American puts, so long as the interest rate is positive, the value of the put can be higher than the value of the, the American put can be worth in excess of the American, uh, of the European put. For American, for calls, if the dividend is zero, the American call and European call will have the same value. It's not optimal. Okay, so it's not optimal to exercise an American call early if, this is an important if, if the dividend is zero. If the dividend is non-zero, the dividend is positive, dividend yield is positive, then it may well be optimal to exercise an American uh, call early. And in that instance, the American call is worth more than the European call. But that is restricted to where dividends, dividend yield is in, in excess of zero. So one last thought here. Uh, why is it considered not optimal to exercise an American call option early? Make reference to the lower bound condition for call in your solution. Um, generally it's understood that the there's a lower bound condition for call option. So this is uh, where we have a European option and there's no dividend yield. And the lower bound for a European option is S minus X E negative R T. And again, if we take, uh, so that that's a, um, a European option. Represents a lower bound. Now we can show this from no arbitrage conditions, right? If we take the European, an American option, as opposed to European, lowercase c denotes European, uppercase c denotes American. If we exercise early the option, the value of what we receive is s minus x. Okay, so we've, we've excluded, this only is true if there's no dividend yield. Because the intrinsic value, if you, you exercise early the option, what you realize is S minus X. Because that's inferior to the lower bound on the U European call, it doesn't make sense to accept this when you can get this. And so for American call options that don't pay dividend yield, it's preferable, this is preferable to this, and for that reason, we would say you wouldn't exercise early to realize this when if you just take the holding value, the lower bound on the European option, it is superior to the, the exercising early on the American option. And for that reason, wait and see is better than exercising early. Holding on to the option when there's no dividend being paid, that generally produces a better outcome than exercising early for American call options with no dividend.